Tim, what's going on, mate? Okay. So I'm just spacing out here reading my fucking email, as uh, you would expect an old gentleman of myself to do. <laughs> no, no worries at all. Thanks so much for taking the time to do this. Really appreciate it. No uh, problem. The greatest music of all time podcast. So I wanted to start oh, by... It must, it must be a slow day then. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, I'm glad to see that lockdown hasn't uh, hasn't killed your sense of humor. So oh, I got left, man. I mean, my hairdresser left me a long time ago. I mean, really, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm just a little weird. I've been locked up in my house for a year. What do you expect? Well, I I, I hear you've been rehearsing though, because you've got a live stream on the 20th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But rehearsing like I'm rehearsing for like you know we're rolling somebody into the room for me to operate on. You know. That. Uh, you know the you know the whole thing. Look, my hands are dirty from my black hair dye. So I'm uh, anyway. Um, I'm a, I'm a painfully honest, weird old guy. So I hope that's cool. That's that's absolutely absolutely fine. Absolutely fine. So so how come I, we're stuck here? Yeah, we have been rehearsing, but talk about at a distance. It's all on in ears. We're in the same room, but it's a big big room. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do this thing on the weekend. You know, it's my it's a, the new version of the band, which after being a locked down in a year and we missed playing live then we're the, joseph and i are the, only, are the only two guys that want to play the other guys either medically can't or just don't want to anymore uh and um th we found some younger cats that uh of the snarky bumpy camp uh our drummer not only was he in snarky but he's also dr dre's drummer for 10 years he was a musical director so people oh. are going well, are you guys going to get all you know uh, dr dre on us no but it's nice to have that influence in the band because our rhythm sections have always had a funk underlying, which is what made us sound just a little bit different because the way we play our eighth notes is different than say like a band in the early eighties or something like that. with like chunk, 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 real hard, you know, we, we, you know, ours had a little bit more of a funk swing to it. So even when we play eighth notes, it would have a little bit more of a thing to it. It's probably something no one cares about, but I thought I'd share it with you anyway. No, no, a lot of people care about that. I think that's one of the reasons why people love Toto so much and are always practicing the Rosanna shot. The, the thing about our bands, we all came from uh, different places. I was the rock guy, obviously. I didn't even know what a studio musician was until I got into high school and then I became completely obsessed with it. Uh, and I learned, studied, we all studied music a lot. That from 14 to 17 was my, my dive into my studies on nothing else mattered years. Uh, which I'm glad I spent those years. It did come back to help me, all of it. Even the dumb classes in high school, which I thought wouldn't help me. Harmony theory, uh, you know, I learned so much. It was so valuable to me, even in rock and roll. So uh, especially with coming up with parts on, on sessions when we were young, they just give you a blank piece of paper with some chords on and say, be brilliant and roll the tape. You know, they didn't write everything out for me to play. Most of the times they wrote nothing for me to play because they didn't, I'd come up with something better. But that's what they said anyway, that, then so, they still turned in a bill for the arranging bill for me. And I didn't make any extra money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It seems it seems like now if today if you plug in the drum machine, you're a writer in the song. That's why you can like have like 14 writers on a song with three lyrics. I got a big ass. <laughs> I, want, I want to hear the seventy cents the number one record. You made 40 cents. It's fucking great. You brag to your friends, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no money left in, in the music business. Except for playing live. And now what did they do? They took it away from us. Yeah, it's terrible. We want to come back. We want to come back. Yeah, we, well. Or, or, we, or we become the zombie apocalypse. You know, you realize if you don't feed the musicians just a little audience to play to, we turn into zombies. <laughs> well, I, you, I you, you, weren't alive, you weren't alive in the 80s when that already happened. But, you know, but when you get, now it's come back in a different way. To haunt us. <laughs> But you guys, everybody started, I know, everybody I have run into, I mean, when I have the few times I've been out, or the very few people that I trust to come to my home, everyone has a beard now. I thought it was like <laughs> some guy. I, I said, I'm not going to shave my fat face until this the shit's over with. I didn't think I'd have it on my face for a year. And now I've gotten used to it. It's covered up a lot of, you know, sins of my being old, you know? <laughs> but so, so you, um, you started scheduling dates for next year, though, so you must be yeah, to miss I got a whole tour on the books, man. So I'm going ahead as if, hey, man, we're going ahead and hope. That's all I can say. Yeah. If you don't have any plans, then you're stuck with your pants down, aren't you? We've also hoped ourselves into 2022 just in case. 
good good well I mean, I mean we have to be smart about this we have to be safe we don't know what it is there's so many conspiracy theories out there my advice there is, is stop reading everything that's on the internet about this shit because you're either going to go into like you know think that you know people go to pizzas at places to get, eat babies or you're going to think that there's nothing wrong at all and certainly there must be somewhere in the middle where we could meet you know <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's good to it's been great putting on all the Toto records. Uh, well, thank you for that nice segue. I like that. I appreciate it. We went from eating babies to Toto records. I feel well, the same way. Because I was going a bit mad with all the, uh, with all the music <laughs> and stuff. So yeah, no, I know. Good to listen song. to all the records and again in a row. <laughs> That's why we made them. So that people would listen to them and let them forget from it. Now everybody thinks that younger people don't have an attention span. I don't believe that. I believe you have more of an attention span than ever. You're just taking in a lot of information all at the same time. Whereas when we were younger, we were just taking in the stereo speakers and reading the credits. There was nothing to aesthetically take our mind off of it or nothing to take our attention away from this, which is maybe why it was what it was to us. But see, but every generation says that. So now I'm just the, the old bastard repeating what I said I never would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, you, don't at all. you don't know anything about music. It's like, you don't even play it anymore. You put a press a button and somebody sings for you. <laughs> I, I think I think that is true to a certain extent, though. I think that, that we don't hear enough players on uh, on top forty radio. Um, no, you don't hear any player. I mean, maybe you'll hear Tim Pierce a little on guitar, or a little Mike Thompson, but they haven't figured out how to get the guitar thing together. Once they do, they're getting close. Once they don't need the guitar players anymore, it's not. Yeah, you know, oh, oh, you can laugh all you want at me now. I got out while I was still like, you know, when it was time to get out. You know, I didn't get fired. I got myself out. You know. I, I never wanted to be the sad guy. Well, no, I mean, I mean, I, I went as far as I could go with, with the studio musician thing. I got to, I got to be the guy, and I'm really honored. I'm honored to have that on, but I also knew when to get out and leave room for somebody else to have a shot. You know what I mean? That's what was done for me, from Graydon and Rittenauer and and that and Ray Parker and Dean Parks, who's still the king daddy of them all. Um, you know, to give those guys I mean, get back in there to be honest because the records aren't aren't as good as when you guys were the studio musicians like on in all honesty well thank I, you i mean a lot of the times we didn't know what we were going to do and we didn't know who we were going to play with we didn't know who the artist was we didn't know what kind of music we were going to play that day and we didn't know certainly know what group of cats until we saw the cases in the hallway and went, oh wow i get to play with sklar and jr and jeff and mike are here wow i didn't even know they were going to be here this is great and then you see your mates you see your buddies and then we make, they put a chart in front of us and we're used to doing it. They count it off and Jeff starts playing a groove and people are messing around with parts and something by the, by, by the middle of the song, everybody's kind of like locked into a groove. We go, all right, we love this part for the verse. Let's, let's find something right for the chorus. And then we work on that for a second. We play the tune and then a couple of takes, then we'd overdub, start, I double a part. And by, by the end of the three hours, it sounded like a record, except without the vocals. Because we would put all of our input and all of our ideas and our our, our uh, arrangement ideas in there, and they would take that. And by today's standards, that would be songwriting. But by back then, that was just arranging credits, what we were expected to do, to do as number one studio guys. Which I'm fine to do that. That's fine. Those are different rules then. I'm I'm cool yeah. with that. I've had an amazing career. I wouldn't trade any of it away for anything. It it wasn't as uh, as kind of fair as it is now. But I guess the re you know the record business was in a much healthier state and uh, well i mean 99 percent of the people that are in the record business right now shouldn't be if you took away all the shit and heard what they really sounded like and they wouldn't be in the music business right now yeah there are a few, there are obviously a few exceptions to this rule but in general the average pop song that you hear by an average pop singer has been messed with so much it would surprise you no, I mean it's pretty. It's pretty apparent as long as you know what. I mean, we can even hear it. They actually turn it on full blast, like, and it really makes it obvious what it is. And they don't. They like that. It's a, it's like only taking the harmonizer returns from a, a desk, and you just it sounds terrible, right? You know, but it sounds okay when you put it with the original one because all it adds is harmonic distortion and a little bit of pitch. But anyway, you know this. But so you you just made a new album. I, I found the sun again, and you made it old school, right? You, you made yeah, I made it old school. Day. Real people in a room, no click track, no rehearsals. I wrote out the parts, but the parts weren't hard. And a couple, I had a couple of uh, covers that I wanted to do from 1972-ish era, because that's what the album was based upon. Everybody playing live in the studio, except for the vocals. 
I overdubbed the vocals at night. So I had a song a day. And that was my goal. I want to do all the solos live, and especially me. I'm not going to cheat and, you know, get in there and start messing with it and fucking with this. And, you know, I used to lay on my voice. I didn't fucking auto-tune my voice. I just don't have a great voice, so I try to hide it. Um, no, no. The, no, I, 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 was I, thinking, I was listening to those Toto records where you where you did all the lead today. I, 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 no, I like... I, well, oh, thank you. But, I mean, oh, I, spent, oh, I spent a lot of time on a doubling and making it not sound like a double. And it was like, Paige was like with the microscope out trying to be Donald Fagan on this, on everything. It was like, it was, you know, I mean, they were great records. They're a little, you know, I had to have some teeth pulled because of this cavity. You know, a couple of them are a little sweet. You know, I mean, I, mean, I can look back critically on our career and go, we missed the boat a couple of times. Uh, I'd love to remix that again in a little raw form and the people hear what the original intention was. But I think every artist does that. They're all snapshots of our life. When we did the box set a couple of years ago, we all sat in the studio and listened from the first song to the last, to the latest thing. And it's like you're watching This Is Your Life because everybody remembers different stories from the same night. What, what had, are the, what, it was, what like, the very cathartic, it was very cathartic, really. We, we laughed, we cried, we hugged, we, we remembered things differently and we laughed mostly and just went, wow, what a life, man. We've had quite a life, you know. And some of, the, some of the silliness of the lyrics had us on the floor laughing beyond what you guys could ever do to us. <laughs> you know, naked and not yet knowing, how, coming out of David Page's voice, that we had to stop the tape for about an hour on that one. Because <laughs> if you knew Page, it would even be funnier. But, you know, we got away with murder when we were young. I know we did. I know. I mean, listen, I can look back at critics in the face and go, yeah, you were right. That part sucked. But the music was good. I mean, we were young. We, you know, we got ahead of us. You know, we got ahead of ourselves because we always cut the tracks before. We said, "Oh, now we got to write words to everything." No, that's where we I, got I, into I trouble. The lyrics, the lyrics were great on on the vast majority of the tunes. Otherwise, no one would listen. Yeah, to it. Tell your weed guy to stop by my pad on the way on the way home, man. <laughs> <laughs> but so so like, the, what yeah. albums when you look when you listen back did you think? Uh, well, first off, I was able to hear the fidelity of the record for the first time. I was able to hear the low bottom and the top top that we had to cut down to get onto a disc. We were able to let the fades go a little bit longer. So some people could hear us jamming a little bit more. So they go, wow, there's some extra stuff on here. Well, it's not like we recorded extra stuff. We just hid extra stuff because we couldn't fit it on the record. So for that reason alone, you're only going to hear that in that box set. We're not, you know, we're not putting that out for the rest of everybody to get. So, I mean, I mean it's hard when you don't have a lot of new product and and now with the advent of a new band i'm not sure with the litigation and how badly that all turned out for us um it actually happens because when, uh, when when no, on if, I into, if i get into it real hard i get i get the note from the law you know lawyers you know okay well then, 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 then there's no point but so you but you so the point is like you know there's not going to be a proper Toto documentary ever there's never going to be another total i'm sorry for the dirty hands again it's just a lazy morning um yeah there's not going to be anything like that there's not going to be another total album but the, the closest we can get is you know for us to participate in solo i was dropping the same day and go out and play our new music and then play the total music too because it's part of my 40 year 43 year career i was it i lost the case paid a huge ridiculous amount of money with david page uh we paid for everything we paid for the lawrence we paid for the our 25 percent each of the name and the two widows um Mike Picaro's widow and Jeff Picaro's widow get 25%. Of those guys get nothing because they signed out of the deal in 1986 and I couldn't bring them back into the deal and our original manager should have dealt with this and they didn't and I got blamed for it. And uh, the rest of it has a very, very, sad, very rest of it has a sad ending and um, like a 44, 45 year marriage broke up. It's like, you know, what? I can't imagine those guys would ever break up. Well, it happens sometimes. That's I'm sad. I'm not happy about it. It makes me. I've already cried a million tears at this point. Life goes on. Well, I'm really so. I'm really sorry, Steve. But you, you, you guys don't deserve that. But Man, well, you know, there's a couple people real happy about it. They're gonna make a lot of money sitting on their fat, flabby asses having martinis at the club, laughing at me. So I got this for them. <laughs> well, quite right. But yeah, I don't really understand what. So, but. You, you get to keep the name to, to go touring, though. You can, you can tour. Yeah, to I'm going to use it. If I don't, David's pointed out to me something very to the point. Even though he can't tour with us, he stands with Joseph and I. He works with it. He was working with rehearsing the band. 
he's always on, you know, we wrote a song for Ringo again, you know, you know, we're still brothers, man. I still see David. David just can't get on an airplane or a bus to travel because he has medicines. He has to take at an exact time and stay on that. And he can't go to another time zone and get all fucked up. That he can have a seizure and die. And I'm not going to lose my brother over a fucking rock band. You know, but is he still involved? Very much so. Every decision I make, everything I decide to do, I run by page first. Because it's still, him and Jeff started the band initially and then brought us all in one by one. And then when we signed, we were a band. But, uh, and that was very kind of uh, David and Jeff to do that, you know, to make a real band like that. I'll never forget that. But I always wanted to earn my place. And yeah. in, in that, to, to allow myself to say that I deserve to get an equal share but, but if you guys can use the name for touring but how come you guys can't make another album is that just the the, the kind of nitty-gritty of the, of the lawsuit well, because first off we are still making albums well yeah precisely you and joe have have your new you yeah and if, and if we all work on it together what do you call that there's one guy that doesn't oh, work on it he didn't please. work on those records for 25 years and nobody really paid much of attention so um he ended up working on them anyway that's the irony um yeah, we're just going to move on like this. this it, it makes more sense. I mean, it, when you make a total album, more people are involved. See, when I make my record, I make the final decisions. I can make a record in eight days. If it was a total record, it'd be eight months because I have to deal with everybody's personal ideas and trying this and trying this and trying that, where I just wanted to get it done, see if I could do it. Because I've done all of our other records for like, you know, six, eight month long records. I'm just like, it, it, yeah. it, I don't have that. You know, how much more time do I have? How many more great summers do I have? Man, I'm not going to waste it in the recording studio. I did that when it was fun. I was single and it was young. It was great. And I learned a lot and I partied a lot and hung out with some of the best artists, producers, engineers. And what can I say? It was a great time. Yeah, it was a little I, nutty. I can but, understand. You know, everybody was a little nutty. So it was fun for everybody, you know. But now I'm a fucking straight as an arrow, you know, which I is also fun. And you you did a you did a cover of a, a Joe Walsh tune on on your album. I did. That was a friend of mine, also a hero of mine, you know. And I know him through Ringo. He's Ringo's brother-in-law. He doesn't even know I cut the song. He's like, I think I've cut his songs before. He's like, Hey, why didn't you do that, man? It's like, <laughs> I, I, I love you, Joe, but he just doesn't like to hear that. I mean, why? Joe. I would say the Beatles and the, and Joe Walsh and all the Barnstorm and James Gang, all the permutations of Joe's offshoots of bands have been a massive influence on my musical being. I know you, maybe you don't hear it all the time, but it's there. It's underlying. My friends, John Pierce, like the guy who's playing Toto now, he's playing Huey's band. But uh, him and I, man, Joe Walsh and, and the Beatles and everything, and the Prague shit, that's all we listen to. I mean, it just he just touched me in my heart, man. He still does. He just, it's beautiful music, beautifully played by great musicians. What's not to love? Yeah. I, mean, I think he's such a soulful guitar player. And he's a funny guy as well. A lot of personality. Yeah, yeah it was a it was a great show. I hadn't heard the original song because I haven't listened to all of his albums. Like I know like life's been good and stuff, but I, I loved it. And then I went back and listened to the Joe Walsh version. So yeah, you should listen to Barnstorm, the first album and the first solo album, which was a Barnstorm album, really, which is Joe's album after the uh, James Gang. Uh, it, it, it was done up in the uh, Caribou Ranch, which doesn't which doesn't live there anymore, sadly. Uh, and it was really neat little place, and they made some wonderful music up there. I talked, to, I got in Bill Zimzik's face at Joe's 70th birthday party a couple years back. I never met Bill Zimzik, and I was like, all this fan, I'm gonna ask him questions about the James Gang Year album, which was in 1969. You know, he was going, You know that album? I go, Do I know that album? Let me blah, 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 blah. I did 20 minutes on the album, and he was cracking up, going, well, That's nice. Everybody's always asking me about Hotel California. This is cool. You ask me about this. You know? So yeah, I'm so sure I, I knew the deep cuts and shit like that, you know. Yeah, I think people would prefer he would prefer that rather than being grilled about Hotel California. So what was it? Well, like? you know, it's like everybody asked you about the song Africa. It's like, oh, I can't wait to talk about it. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. I can. Well, I can imagine. Uh, but it's a golden carrot, man. You know, it's there for people to hear us play it live. Do you still like playing it live? I'll play live any night, but I can't play it on film or on anything else because then I have to pay a sync fee, which would be a million dollars to the woman just to go like this to us. So, so. Oh, Christ. Yeah. Well, the thing is, you can still, like COVID permitting, you can still go out on the road. And that is 
But well, I mean, we're all COVID. I mean, who knows when I come out of this, I might have like straight blonde hair, you know, no beard, not like that. <laughs> wear a suit and a tie and everything like that. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Me, Mr. Lugger. <laughs> Be all respect. No, I won't have him. Too late for that. Uh, I don't know. I can't wait to get out of my house. I mean, I want to see my, I want to play. It's been great to rehearse the guys, even from a distance. But, but we've all been tested as well. So, I mean, eventually you're going to have to trust people again. I mean, yeah. once even when you have a, a vaccine, the vaccine's not 100%. You have as much chance of getting the flu as you do COVID with the same vaccine. Yeah. So you ask yourself, well, if I've got a 50% chance of not having it, if I don't take it and I don't fuck with my immune system or God knows what else they got in there, uh, my chance is better than taking it and then assuming this is uh, just going to roll right into the next version that you got to take into the next version until we just walk off the cliff as the, meat, the dead meat suits and the AI takes over. Yeah. I, I, that's, that, that's the doom and gloom version, of course. I think people are just going to get get pretty fed up with it once the vaccine's out and we're still being told to just you know no more gigs and stuff people are going to be like sorry but we're we're going to have the gigs again now uh, enough enough's enough um enough's I, enough. a lot of people are going to die not because not because they're going to die of covid they're going to just die yeah they're gonna and get blamed on whatever i mean you know what happened to the other viruses that we have right now where's all the cancer fucking deaths where's the drunk driving deaths I'm not, and I'm not a QAnon guy. Please don't, don't put me in there. I'm not in anybody's fucking camp. I just am a independent. What the fuck's going on, man? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. You well, hear that, one that one thing, people. one thing one day, hear the opposite the next day. Who's telling me the truth? That's all I want to know. We already know about the clown fucking president and all that shit like that, you know. And but even he's sore losers. I mean, we really don't make us look good. We're not all crazy. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay, all Americans are not crazy. They don't all, all look like me either. So, I mean, there's some somewhere in between. My insanity is is a very smart, middle of the ground smart guy that will be there to help you if you needed help. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm appreciative and grateful of my life. So I, I got nothing to bitch about at all. Except I wish everybody be cool. That's it. Yeah, well, I think you're helping a lot of people by bringing out new music. And when when Run to Me came out, I was like very very excited to see that you. Oh, got thanks, man. Well, that was a gift That's for Ringo, nice. 80th birthday. You know, that was um, Ringo. Yeah, the Beatles are starting the on switch of my life. You know, and um, <clears throat> I just wrote me, Dave, and Joe wrote the song for him for his 80th birthday. Made a little video in my backyard just for, for no money at all. We just we just goofed on because I want to play on it. Then it was great, and he liked the song, so we played on it. So I, I have a song with Ringo, so I can die now. He's been very good to me. There, I have a song with Paul and Ringo and him on the last album too. So that that was a great moment for me. I love, the Beatles are just it's still the classical music of our lifetime. You know, it's it's as good as it gets. Did did Ringo track that drum part at, at yeah. his house and stuff? That's yeah, yeah. No, we snuck up with the with his team, and I snuck in the back door with the whole you know, hazmat suit on, and I snuck in the back door, and we we did it. And I watched him play and stuff like that. Because he's older, I don't want to get. Him. I don't want to be the guy that gets Ringo sick. Okay, I'm not going to go down in history as that guy. <laughs> That's the most hated man on the planet, right? You know what I mean? It's like no. No thanks. The, uh, I, love, I love him too. I love him too much. He's a really great friend of mine. I really, over almost nine years now, we've been in the band together. So, I there's a dream come true for, for me, you know. And he's become a wonderful friend. Him, and Barbara, the best. And I met that's how I met Joe and Marjorie as well. But Joe didn't know I did this this song for him. So this is just like a, I wanted to play on it. Then I check it out. I didn't ask him. So I didn't even bother filling his parts. I just left let the jam. That thing about the record is that you never hear anybody jam on the end of a record anymore. It's all very quick fade because it goes the same shit over and over again, over and over and over again. That's what they don't tell you. Uh, now, on, when we used to make records, some of the best things always happened at the jams because once we knew we had the take, we could just go for it and start playing. And we did every time. And sometimes that playing was cool. Like the whole end of Rosanna and all the rest of the shit, that wasn't rehearsed. That was just completely played. <clears throat> so it's like at the end of that, did you get that on tape? And they were, yep. It's like, fuck, that's what we want to hear. Yeah, I, I mean, I think one of the reasons why you don't hear so much jamming at the end of uh, records anymore is because maybe people can't play. Like, 
and especially now like where's the motivation um but have you been able to keep keep playing i mean do you need to keep yeah playing? man because you know i'm i was lucky enough to make a to make something of myself before it all went under yeah, yeah. It needs to give you money to make records, and and we spent all our money making the records. And somebody offered us a lot of money for a record, and we'd find ways to spend all that money on the record, and not and give ourselves very little. Because you, you know, we spent it all on the product, and we go get we go to London and do the symphony strings there. You know, like you know, we had you know we, our our greatest heroes did their records there. That's what we wanted. That's what we, what we were going for. We were just trying to copy. Well, Elton does his strings there. Well, the Beatles recorded enough said. That's where we're going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We wanted. We wanted to. Like, every time when I played at the Albert Hall, I stand there. And go. Which side was Jimmy on? Which side was Clapton on? I just want to see if I'm approximately standing where they stood. What about the Beatles? John stood here, right? You know. I'm like, you know, I'm like a little kid. I'm like, of course, man. You want to. You know, you never. I played Jeff's guitar, played Evan Halen's guitar. I'm not, I don't make me sound like I play like them. I just sound like I play a guy playing a guitar. Same story. So, I mean, it's all in hands and the heart, it's not in the magic guitar and app. It doesn't, that, that, that doesn't exist. Well, so, that, save all you kids out there, save some money. It's really your hands and your heart. Work on that. There are people out there, you know, who, who, who do the same, you know, do the same for you uh so you know i hope i hope you know that you know um, i don't but uh thank you anyway well there, there are there are loads so i wanted to ask you a few song specific sure. questions about like the back catalog first of all i'm sure you probably get asked this a, a lot but do you really hate the tune 99 and no i don't hate the song i said it once because i hated it that day <laughs> i said a lot of stupid shit like you know off the top of my head, being a smart ass, maybe I had a little buzz on or something back in the day. Uh, no, I don't hate the song. So is that the just lyrics, like the lyrics are as silly as the name of the band, okay? That's all it is. It ended up, everybody made fun of it because it was the, it was the either a, a radio station name, 99 point whatever, then they put their name, they not, I'd sing 99 and they put their name, of their, it was so bad, it was lame, it was terrible. Uh, <laughs> or, or they thought it was the get, I thought it was the girl from Get Smart, you know. There was that, and then there was the David version, which is the you know all people have na uh, numbers instead of names. So I said, "You have a ninety-nine? Why ninety-nine? Well, it, it just ended up being that. So there it is. It's a it's a hit for us, and I get to sing it whenever I feel like it. If I feel like it, I do it. You know, what I mean, I mean I, you know, I'm not. Listen, I, the hits are the hits. People, what resonates with people, I. I I am the wrong guy to ask. And do, do you think the Turn Back album is a little bit underrated? Yeah. I, mean, I, I think, I think recently. And people right. should give it another listen on the box set when it's remastered because it was it sounds like a different record. We didn't remix it because that would lose the integrity of the original concept, but um, we do fix the middle and the bottom and the top best we could it's it's a much better sounding record and we were going for something really weird and yep so we did we made something really weird i think it's i think if you listen to it now and, and you didn't say who it was and you just played it for people you get a different reaction yeah i think a lot of people would just consider it to be a classic toto record i think we're getting yeah. to the point now i think we're getting to the point now where where it's just like people have the great bands of, of before and they don't really remember the, the commercial performance of each record anymore. Yeah, so they, don't, they, they don't remember all, all the deep cuts, you know. People are people are loving Toto on streaming services. Like I tell them I love them back. That you guys I'm get paid a lot. Mr. Streamer to send me some fucking money. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. The streaming services are very corrupt. No. <laughs> oh. Uh, no, I'm, uh, you know, are I'm, they? I've only just worked out the bleedingly obvious, but uh, uh, yeah, no, I not. Listen, man, they've been saying that from the beginning of the time. But here's the problem when they have programs now, they're going to alleviate the musician. What they want to do is get rid of guys like me who've been playing their whole life and dedicated my whole life to playing, man. Before television took over, before there was a way to learn how to play like Jimi Hendrix on the internet and all that bullshit. Um, no, I think I. We're gonna die, and then they're gonna have a button that goes Steve Look at there, and it'll sound like me, or they'll have Jimi Hendrix, or they'll have Mike Landau, they'll have like whoever Larry Carlton would name anybody, Jock, uh, 
Alan Holsworth, name your name your favorite guitar player. You know what I mean? You'll, and you'll be able to press a button and get that exact lick, and or his handful of signature licks or whatever. And you can mor morph it with a melodyne into the perfect segue solo. We won't need musicians anymore. And the AI will make records. They have an AI program now that makes a Beatles song for it. Are you into that one? Go check it out, man. Spend a little time today. Learn something. That's, I've, I've heard about I mean, I've, internet. I've, internet makes its own Beatles song. I, I, Google I that. Up, it's too depressing. But they, they have internet. They have AI, AI characters and they've tested them on audiences. And people like the AI characters, like they fall in love with them more than they do with like real people. So what the hell is going to happen? Well, to that's you? the whole problem with the, with now what we have with with the uh, nobody has a face anymore. Everybody's yeah. in fuck with their face. You know what I mean? Girls start when they're twenty five years old. When they're sixteen, they want tits instead of a new car. You know what I mean? Uh, that that's more important to them. You know, get me a fake ID so I can get in the club or whatever. Uh, all this weird uh, narcissistic behavior that we have with these bloody phones. You know what I mean? It's like this is like you lose your phone. Of course, I have a picture of my girlfriend. Uh, yeah, she is pretty, isn't she? Uh, but uh, yeah, I go this narcissistic thing. I <laughs> okay, never mind. At least it's not a picture of me. That would have been sad. That would uh, be well, uh, okay, You know, if you've got a picture of your girlfriend on on your phone, that's not that narcissistic. That's not that. No, no, that's that, very that, nice. That keeps me in good graces. It reminds me how pretty she is. So yeah, that's not that's nice. But yeah, the phones are the narcissism. Uh, no, I mean, we were down there. We rented a place down at the, at the beach just to get the hell out of here. We rented a beach house just to pretend like we went on vacation. So, I mean, we had a few guests out, you know. And people are standing on the beach. Now, I don't understand how you build a woman like this. Now, you have a woman who has a regular sort of, sort of body, but all of a sudden a gigantic ass. Like, where did the gigantic ass come from? And they're like in these little string bikinis with their ass out and they're doing the whole thing. Just making sure they get the right shove in and then they shave the ass in so you take all the fucking, you know, <laughs> the barnacles and all the rest of the shit that's growing really off of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll be your day tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Classic thing when you go on holiday to see the Instagram boyfriends and husbands having to do the long photo shoots. So it's very, uh, it's very tragic. So I, I, it's been great to see um, Toto with with joe williams as lead singer oh yeah man but so joe good. god well, thank you. i'm glad i'm glad i'm glad you listened to the records too because then you can see if you i bet you if you put the two records on shuffle it'd be an interesting experience for you i i, I listened to both of your records in order and then i also went back and listened to all of toto stuff and i think apart from toto 4 fahrenheit and the seventh one were my favorite records and they were they both with joe singing on them? yeah so, so, well, so, those had, they had all of us on there singing, but Joe was the lead singer. As in, I mean, in, in the sort of, because a lot of people say, you know, oh, what about Bob, Bobby? Um, I mean, it's great. Listen, another thing, Bobby and I, we, you know, we kissed him up about five years ago, man. Before yeah, yeah. Bobby's in a bad place right now. He's got dementia. He's not in a good place. And I'm, not sure. well, yeah. I'm glad I was able to say, hey, man, I love you. Hug him, all that shit and all that shit. In front of the NAMM show, which I did not realize was going to happen, but... So people don't think that there's any hate there, man. man. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to do one of his tunes and uh, dedicate it to him or something. You know, kind of a That's love pretty thing. nice. You know, so there's no bad feelings with, with uh, Bobby at this point. You know? I, yeah. I, people have to really do something bad to me for me to get mad with it. I'm not mad at anybody anymore. Peace and love, right? Yeah, peace and love indeed. So, so uh, it's great that things have come full circle and that you're going to be doing uh, the live stream on November the 21st. Yeah, well, the live stream is just a teaser now. I and mean, we can't really do too much of our new shit because the record companies, are, you know, they want to wait till the album comes out or whatever. But what I'm going to do is give you the sneak peek of what the new band sounds like playing some of the old stuff. We don't really have that much time to rehearse, but, you know, it's loose. It'll be raw. You know what I mean? You know, and you get to see it one time and then we'll come see you in your town. You know what I mean? And it'll be fun. That's I mean, that's the idea, anyway. That's going to be awesome. Uh, what, what, what are you going to, are you going to play like main, mainly the hits and some new, some new stuff? Well, no, we're not going to play. All, we'll, we'll play some. Well, yeah, we'll play some of the hits, and then we'll play some of the other weird shit, and then let everybody play a little bit, and then who knows who may show up, and um, then off we go. 
that's going to be awesome. And when when does the tour when does the tour start? Um, It'll start next summer. It looks like probably the end of July, right around there. July, August. If if in fact we uh, we can disinfect the planet. I think by then you'll be you'll be away. They just announced an, another vaccine, ninety five percent approval. So I think by then. Oh, no, they're going to be getting vaccine no matter what approval because they're fucked up the whole world economy. They're going to fucking get everybody back to work again. Don't matter if you get sick. You're just sick then. And it'll go away. And then we'll all go like, why did I stay in my house for a year? Blah, blah, blah. There'll be some lawsuits. I love the guy, the German guy that's going to sue the world. I said, well, let me know who the world is. When you get that address, let me know who that is. I'd like to know who that is. Yeah, I think many people would like to see the world at this point. Um, I've got one final question for you because I know you've got to get to uh, rehearsal and uh, you know, a, a busy schedule. So um, I wanted to ask about about Tambu. Um, uh -huh. Was it was it well was it Kingdom of Desire first where you sang all the lead vocals? Yeah, that was great. And then right. Tambu, you also sang quite a few lead vocals. What 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 was the song "Just Can't Get to You" of Tambu? Do you remember that tune? What's that? What so song? Of Tambu called Just Can't Get To You. Just Can't Get To You, yeah, yeah. Do you That's me. That? Yeah. That, that was a bit more of a kind of like raw, raw, not raw, but like rootsy type of sound. I was just yeah, man, it was kind of like an English sound, you know, that we grew up listening to English pop music. Um, that was a fun record to make, man. It was right, the first record we made with Simon back in, God damn, it was like 30 years ago. Jeez, where's the time to go, man? Wow. Yeah, well, here we are. I will remember on that record as well. That's yeah, that was one of, you know. All of the albums have big, big kind of like songs that you have in your sets. A good, consistent discography. Steve, thanks so much for all the music. And I hope you Thanks, able thanks to Tom. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, it's great to see you guys active again and uh yeah man i mean I'm, I'm, it's not going to bring anybody back and it's not going to change anybody's mind but you know i'm going to play the best music with the best musicians i know <laughs>